Hello. I'm on the deck of my dad's house in Minneapolis on a lovely summer day. And you hear nature all around us, the chirping of birds and the sound of the Minneapolis airport. And I'm going to try to do a drawing of this uh, conglomeration of flowers and that winged angel vase contraption there. And I'm going to try to make sense of this uh, chaos. In color, it makes sense because you've got the red and the green and the pink and the white and all the different kinds of green. But in black and white, this is going to turn into one big bunch of mush unless I do a good job of trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, Van Gogh was very good at implying color in his drawings, his black and white drawings, and I would love to be able to figure out how he did it. Um, so, anyway, wish me luck. And hopefully I won't have to cut off my ear at the end of this, though that is probably what I'm going to rather do. Anyway, talk to you later. I think I'm going to cut off my ear before I even start this goddamn thing. My iPhone is taking the movies here and it says it doesn't have enough memory, whatever that means. Anyway, so I'm starting to draw the, the composition and trying to figure out what plants are where and how this is all going to work. Because as far as I can tell it's not going to, but I'll try to think positively. I'm screaming and my brother is in the other room wondering why I can't be nice. And, um, now already I can see that I'm having some problems but I'm just going to ignore them. Let's just pretend that the problems don't exist. Okay. So Some pink flowers here, some ferns down here, birds making all that racket over there. There's all sorts of trees behind this thing, and of course, I, you know, it's just green. There's like one tenth of this is actually something other than green, so it's going to be hard to turn it all into something that makes any sort of sense, I think. There's this big pink flower right here. So maybe maybe pink and red will end up being sort of left white of the page. Now, when Van Gogh was drawing, he sometimes used his reed pen in different ways to sort of imply color. Um, use a big broad part of the pen to sort of suggest the outlines of flowers and then he'd use something else to represent something else. I don't really quite know. Stipple patterns, different patterning. But it was, uh, they're quite beautiful. Chirp, chirp, chirp. But, so the top of this hat that this, the vase that this angel-like thing is wearing has dark burgundy, almost brown flowers. And there's these little, two little putti flanking this cartouche on the side of this thing. And you have the stalk, and then you have a Corinthian column, volute, and then you have the angel's eyes, and her mouth, and her chin. And she has a dress that's made of fish scales, and her little boobs are right here, and her little tie thing here, and there's sort of a volute angel wing coming down on either side. Of course this one you can't see because there's that plant in front of it. The 
there's sort of a tree here. It's sort of a structure that is different from the other other parts of the drawing. Some of the branches are in shadow and some of them are highlighted and then in between there's all these yellow and green leaves. And then there's, to make matters delightful, there's a little bright green ribbon tying all the branches together to make them go up in the same, they're weaving together I guess is what they're doing. And here's that pink flower again. Okay, then we've got green, small green leaves. Part of the wing, angel's wing there. She can't see the angel. I don't know how I'm going to delineate that. Well, the darkest part of this drawing is right to the right of the angel's wing here. I don't know what kind of plants these are. My father should be here telling you what these things are, but he's not. He's doing the crossword puzzle. And then someone else should be here telling you what kind of birds these are, but they're not. Then there's all these little little small leafy things here. I don't know what they belong to, but they're there. there's a big droopy pink flower that's gone past its prime. Lots of green. Green, green, green. Branches from other trees in the background coming in. So far, it looks like a bunch of Scritchy scratches. There's some sort of plants here that have a red interior and sort of pink outside, so they they actually have a different structure than some of the other ones. So we'll draw those differently. There's lots of green small leaves everywhere. just obliterated one of the droopy pink leaf, leafy things I just drew because I didn't realize that was what it was. Oh dear. I think I need to add structure immediately here. Here's where I, my sleeve got caught in the ink. So it needs, there was really some dark darks. Is a, this is a drawing that might have worked better if I used white ink on black paper because I look at things like this and I see more dark and I see light. Some of the ferns. Put it up here so you can see. It's a pot of ferns. And some of the leaves are darker than others. Ooh, now we've got the wind. I suppose it's going to blow my camera all over. Oh, there goes the, the uh, umbrella over us. is <laughs> swinging around. pot underneath here. And the pot, of course, isn't just a plain pot. It has all sorts of frou-frou on it as well. And how do you distinguish frou-frou on a pot versus frou-frou on a leaf versus something else? And I don't know. It's another trick. Oh god, okay. 
So, what does it look like so far? A bunch of craziness. I haven't been doing much cross-hatching, which sort of implies shadowing. You know, if people saw cross-hatching, they would, I think, assume that that's an attempt to make something appear darker in terms of tonality rather than um, you know, the color of the thing. So maybe this does need some cross-hatching to sort of imply uh, shadow and space. So. I didn't really cross-hatch so much as hatch. Trip, 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 trip. Something we don't have in Boston is these chirpy birds outside my window. So whenever it was with my dad, I remember that there are birds in the word, world, not just pigeons. Those doity pigeons, boids. And then they're over here, there's all sorts of red, orangish, pinkish plants, flowers. And again, our plan was to have those remain the white of the paper. To again, give some sort of sense to this composition. Pot there. The deck is below. Okay, now right here we have big waxy green leaves that belong to the, whatever kind of pink flower this is. And behind the sort of strong looking leaves. They're not delicate, so I'm sort of pressing down to sort of suggest their strength by using these big fat lines. And cross hatch the shadowing. There's another pot back here. And then the base of the Sculpture is there. And then more ferns from that plant that I thought I had finished, but I guess I hadn't. Below that is the shadow of the base that everything is sitting on. A lot of dark over here. Right now it still a conglomeration of stuff. I don't know if it's ever going to be anything but that. Maybe I can turn this into one of those hidden pictures things. Inside of all of this chaos, I'll draw the toothpick and the alarm clock and the comb. In this picture find, a kite. A crescent moon And of course, way in the distance here, but you know, you have oak trees and all this other stuff blocking, blocking the sky. Okay, now it's time to really start to try to figure out how to make this work. So this big vase, this is shaded. bottom to it. And you know what the difference between shade and shadow are? Shade is the dark area of something where light does not hit it. A shadow is the cast dark of an object that is, you know, shadow is cast by a light source so things can be in shade or in shadow or both. It can be dark because there's no light. I guess they can't have a, maybe they can't have, they can't be both. Anyway, this is in shade. Here's 
upper left boob, which is almost the lightest thing on here that we're measuring. This is very dark. Here in the background, the big silver bird in the sky. The Delta flight coming in from somewhere. And this, this Boyd's. I keep on completely covering up that pink flower. That, here's the, I, guess, I guess maybe I didn't. Try to restart the camera here and move, see if I can move it a little closer so you can see me try to fix the individual sections of this. So I'll be right back, okay? Okay, here's where we left off. I still have my ears, both of them. I don't have much patience, but I have my ears anyway. So where did we leave off? I was going to try to fix this. So I don't even know where I left off here. But I have to put some sort of logic in this drawing. So here's some large fern leaves coming in off of stage left. Or is that stage right? It's opposite of what you think. Um, show up much. So let me go back to this tree. Here's a big pink flower. To get my bearings here. I'm all screwed up. figure out how to make, differentiate these separate plants in some way so that they appear to be different. And that's the hard part. Because they sort of all look alike to me in black and white. There's little leaves and big leaves, and there's white flowers and orange flowers. You know, the large leaves can be delineated, I guess. The smaller leaves just become sort of a texture. Again, the darkest area this area over here. It's in shadow and shade, I guess. No, it's in, sh it's in shade. Light is not getting to it. Back up here, I have these these leaves here are red. So I'm sort of cross-hatching them. And they're, it's funny because behind them it's the, it actually appears to be darker. The light is hitting the top of these leaves and they're sort of transparent. So you actually see light coming through them. Behind it are these trees. And then this is all, all this area here is trees and leaves. There's nothing, there's no sky anywhere on this drawing except for right about here. Right about in this area here. So all of this is filled with 
texture and color, but it's sort of not the subject of this drawing, so I'm sort of implying that, it's drifting off into nothing. So I'll keep on drawing, keep on filling it up with cross hatching. There's areas that are entirely black. There's deep within the plant. So I guess I can make those entirely dark. These fern leaves. directions and some are in shade and some are have light hitting them directly. So by maybe throwing some cross hatching there I can sort of give this thing some sense. Or not. You can sense my anxiety here about this particular drawing. I wonder if there's a straight razor in the house. I don't even know where to go next. Down here, I guess. These are lots of orangish flowers. The flowers and the leaves are about the same size as each other. The leaves I'm drawing with cross hatching to distinguish them from the flowers that have little black centers in them. look at this drawing, it is going to be like those drawings in this picture find, except in this case it's going to be in this picture find an angel with wings and some flowers and some ferns. You still won't be able to do it, even though that's what the picture is. The easier to... So here's our closer up image here. I'm zooming out and it's going to get out of focus again. Anyway, as you can see, a hodgepodge of everything. So here is that first drawing. And now I'm going to try using a different pen and maybe draw it more calligraphically. And maybe it will work better. So again, say goodbye to that one. Try to draw the same thing using a sort of more calligraphic pen. That's sort of a calligraphic way to do it here. This pen is like writing with butter. do now is sort of draw the flowers. It's very wet. I'm going to get smear my hand all over this drawing a bit. All sorts of calligraphic stuff down 
here. And now we have the ferns and line calligraphically as you can see. Pterodactyl background. Hatching. I can turn this into something that makes sense. Certainly, it doesn't make any sense right now. <laughs> 